Hey, uh, my name is Terry. Today we're going to take a look at the difference between a fiber scope and a video scope. Um, basically, both units will allow you to do inspections for industrial environments, stuff like that. Fiber scopes um, are set up a little bit differently though. You've got a uh, fiber optic image bundle that runs all the way from the eyepiece to the tip of the probe. So all along your insertion proof you've got um, fiber optic bundles that will give you an image that you see through the eyepiece. When you look through, um, it'll have a little bit of a honeycomb appearance to it, and that's because the image bundle is made up of individual fiber optic pixels. And then surrounding that, you've got light bundles so that you get illumination out of the tip. Um, light bundle attaches at the base here, so it shines all the way through, comes out the tip. Uh, and then you also have the outside sheath, which is usually uh, stainless steel to protect it. Um, these units are used by um, lots of people, but they have some limitations, which is where the video scopes come in. Um, a video scope won't have as much stuff going through the probe because you have a video camera chip right at the tip, so you get a live video image from here, um, and then you also have LED lights around the camera chip at, this, at the outside, um, so those shine directly from here, and basically all that goes through your probe is just the video cable that goes back to the monitor, or in some cases to a USB handle. Um, and then the power for the LED lights as well. So if you damage this cable, not as bad as damaging this one because you don't have optics running through here. You pretty much just have power cables, but at the same time, the video camera chip in the head of the, of the probe is very expensive. And so if you damage the camera head um, and it needs to be replaced, you pretty much have to take apart the whole unit. Um, same thing for the fiber scope. If a fiber scope is damaged anywhere along the probe, so either at the front, middle, or back, you're going to damage the optics and they're, have to gonna, they're going to have to be replaced as well. So um, this part, anywhere along here, you could damage it, but at the same time you can see that it is still fairly flexible. So it'll give you quite a bit of um, ability to go into different areas. Same thing with video scopes, they just have the power cables and then sometimes um, articulation wires as well. Um, articulation wires in both are usually the same. You have a wire unit that runs from where you control the articulation to the front of the probe. If you move it one way, it'll pull the wires in one direction. And if you move it the other way, it'll pull the wires in another direction. Fiber scopes, usually because they have the image bundle in the middle, the articulation doesn't bend as well as some of the other units because you're moving a lot more mass in the same amount of diameter. Um, for a video scope, because it's there's not as much going on through the cable here. When you bend the articulation wires, they tend to flex a lot more. So you do get a better range of motion with these ones as well. Um, <clears throat> for a fiber scope, obviously because there's an eyepiece on the end of the unit, you have to look through it to do your inspections. If you want to capture video or capture images to document for people, you're going to need to attach a video camera to the eyepiece. So instead of just holding this unit and doing your inspections, you're going to have an eyepiece coupler along with the camera unit and then that's going to connect your TV. Um, video scope, you don't need to worry about that because you have a live video camera chip. You're always going to view the image from a video scope on a monitor. It'll either be a TV, a USB, so a computer laptop or on the portable monitor here. Um, you're always going to get a live color image and you're always going to see it directly. You're not going to ever have to look through an eyepiece because that's not the way these units work. Um, the only other thing that you might want to think about when you're looking at these is um, repair costs. Obviously, it's a lot more expensive to repair a digital video camera chip that's really small and in the tip. Um, these ones usually take a bit longer too because you have to rebuild um, them. Fiber scope, you're going to be replacing the glass optics that are inside them. So again, you're looking at a downtime where you need to replace the glass optics all the way through them. Um, the difference, I guess, would be you can sometimes damage some of these optics, so you might lose um, a few of the fiber optic cables inside and you'll notice some black dots where they're broken. Um, okay, when you're looking at capturing files for the fiber scopes and the video scopes, um, the fiber scope, because it has an eyepiece that you have to look through to do your inspections, you're going to have to couple a video camera unit with an eyepiece coupler onto it, and it'll look down the uh, insertion probe and it'll give you an image on the screen. When you're doing that, you need to adjust the focus on the eyepiece of the fiber scope as well as the focus on the camera unit to try to get them to sync up. Um, you're never going to get as clear an image though because when you look through here, it has a bit of a honeycomb appearance because each fiber optic pixel makes up your image. So with a 12,000K image bundle, 
um, you've got 12,000 fibers that are giving you uh, a part of an image, and when you put a camera either on that, you're still going to get that distortion in the image. Um, when you look at a video scope, the difference would be that since you have a video camera chip right in the tip, you're getting a direct live color image um, as soon as you turn the unit on, and that will be displayed either on the monitor that comes with it, or you can always export it to, let's say, a TV or a computer or a laptop. So here you're getting a clear image right away. You don't have to worry about adjusting focus or anything like that. It's always an automatic focus. That being said too, because everything's integrated and the camera chips in the front, you're gonna have the ability to capture images and video directly right on a memory card that's inside. So you can do documentation right away. You're getting a clear image with this unit and you also have the ability to pick longer lengths Fiber scopes, because they have glass optics that are all the way through the image bundle, you're going to notice that you can only go up to about three meters, sometimes a little bit longer. With a video scope, um, we have some that will go 10 meters, 30 meters, or longer. Um, some of the pipe cameras even, they go up to 40 or uh, 120 meters, which would be about 400 feet. So you're getting a lot more use out of those, and each of them will have the ability to capture images. Um, also, with a fiber scope, there aren't a lot of accessories for them. Um, aside from the video camera unit that you can attach to the eyepiece, or the light source that goes on the bottom, um, there's not really anything else that you can add to that. With a video scope, <coughs> because the camera chip's in the front, um, a lot of them will have the option to add mirror tips. So you can have a mirror tip that'll let you look out 90 degrees or different angles. Um, also, because the video camera chip and the LEDs are in the front, we can coat the outside of the units. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of them, there is an option for non-conductive um, plastic outside, so you won't get a charge from those. Um, they also tend to have larger lenses that you can put on the front so that they're also um, better sealed against water and dust. So you'll have higher IP standards when it comes to waterproofness. Um, aside from that, the choice is yours, I guess. <laughs>